Hey, what's good, good people? This is Travail, C.W. Lynch, Mr. What What, and this is the I Am The Possible Universe, specifically the I Am The Possible broadcast, the live broadcast, where our intention, guys, is to help you to revive your hope for what's possible. We do that in two distinct ways. The first way, guys, we want to expose ideas, ideas about you, about ourselves, about life, about God that prevent. We want to expose those ideas that prevent what's possible in your life. And the second way, we want to explore those ideas about you, about me, about life, about God, right, that promote what's possible in your life. I want to personally welcome you into today's broadcast. If you are live or on the replay, as I always say, your presence is the greatest present. That's right. It's a gift that you guys could ever give me. So thank you so, so very much for rocking with me this morning in the I Am The Possible Universe. If you are joining me live this morning, please drop me uh, 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 a good morning, a hello, a how you doing, a happy Saturday, a success Saturday, a sensational Saturday, a spectacular Saturday. Drop me something to let me know that you're rocking with me today in the universe. Today, guys, we are going to be tackling part two. That's right. Part two of a four part series this month, the entire month of April. We're talking about framework. That's right. We're talking about framework. And I'm super duper excited because not only do I get to use this picture frame, uh, this this certificate frame as an example this morning, but I also get to show off the fact that um, tomorrow, man, just 24 hours from now, uh, actually less than 24 hours now, um, I'm going to be celebrating another year as an ordained minister. This is my certificate of ordination. Um, I'm so very godly proud of it. Uh, 2010, right there, April 11th, 2010, I became an ordained minister. Um, and it is my pleasure. It is my passion. Uh, I believe that it is a part of my purpose to serve God in this capacity of, you know, as a pastor, as a shepherd of God's people, as a teacher of the word of God. And so I am super excited about that. Um, so I'm going to be using this as a prop as a example, but I'm also just showing off the fact that by God's mercy and by God's grace, I have been able to teach this word of God um, for 11 years. And I've actually been preaching and teaching since 2001, actually. Um, but officially in the office, the official office, if you guys can see that, the official office right there of an ordained minister. So I'm super excited about it. It's super duper dope. Um, so will you help me in celebrating the fact that I've been in this thing and I continue uh, by God's mercy and by God's strength to do this thing. But today, guys, we're going to be talking about framework, framework part two. And we and I have entitled this one, guys, I have entitled this one, the power of partnership and perspectives, the power of partnership and perspectives. Guys, we're going to revisit what framework is, why it's so influential in our lives, why is, this, why is, it, why is it so impactful in our lives, um, because that's what helps us to understand the value of it, right? Um, and then we're going to be talking about another way. This is another installment, another, another um, yeah, let's just, let's just leave it at that, another installment in um, a very practical, simple way that you can begin to reframe, right? Begin to reframe uh, your thinking and reframe uh, ultimately your speaking and then ultimately what's what's showing up in your life, guys. Um, and so I wanna share with you guys really, really quick. Again, if you're just now joining me live or if you catch this on the replay, please drop me something. Just let me know that you're in the house. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Drop me a hey, good morning. Drop me a peace sign emoji. Give me some love. Give me some energy. I will be dedicating a portion of time where I'll be giving you guys some personal shout outs and some salutes as we get into this content this morning. Uh, but I do want to share my screen uh, really quickly here. Let me see if I can share and get into some of this content because I don't want to waste your time, man. Saturday morning, y'all got things to do. Y'all got places to go, people to see, right? So we want to just jump on into this thing, man. Framework part two, the power of partnership and perspective. Here's the question, guys. Here's the question right here. Have you ever gotten some great advice? 
I know that sounds like really basic, right? Really simple. Have you ever gotten some great advice? Sure, we've 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 all at some point gotten some really good advice. We were all down in the dumps, down in the mud, right? Stuck in it, right? Uh, I posted a video just yesterday. Last couple of weeks, guys, I have been in the funk, man. I have been in the in the funk stunk, right? Just the crap, the crap happens. And like I said yesterday, it wasn't that something dramatic or really, you know, drama field happened in my life. It's just thinking, thinking, man, just unresolved. And we're going to be getting into that in just a moment. Unresolved framework, unresolved perspectives, unresolved issues that have been buried down deep inside the crevices of our hearts and minds. They haven't been dealt with. They haven't been addressed. They haven't been overcome. Uh, and they've just kind of been sitting dormant until something triggers them, right? Do you feel me? Drop me a hashtag if you feel me, right? Some of those unresolved issues that keep springing up, that keep springing up, right? And so, um, you know, all of us get into a position where we need to reach out to somebody. We need to ask somebody, hey, man, you know, be that shoulder for me to cry on, be that partner in my life, you know, be be somebody that I can call on in that midnight hour. Right. You know, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a sibling, whether it's a pastor at a church, whether, you know, even if you're that tight with a coworker, Right. But somebody in your life at some point in time, man, you're going to need somebody to as the old song says, I need somebody to lean on. You feel me? So that's the question. Right. We're going to set the atmosphere, set the tone right here with. Have you ever gotten some great advice? And if so, if you've ever gotten some great advice, guys, check it out. This is why. I'm about to break it down for your man. I'm about to break it down for your one man. This is why. Because I don't want you to just think about good advice as, oh, you know, um, you know, I was having a rough patch. I was going through a rough patch. And I reached out to my homeboy or to my homegirl. And she just said something. And it was really dope. And I was like, all right, cool. That got me through. That could be the case. But I want to take it a level deeper. I want to go a little deeper. You know, guys, if, if you've been watching me for a minute or if this is your first time watching me, you know, I got to take it a couple levels deeper because ain't nothing really as it seems. There's always something greater that's happening if you allow it. So let me just go into this next slide, man. Let me kind of maneuver myself over here, see if I can click it. Oh, that's good, man. That's good. All of my technical things are working this morning. Edification, guys. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't don't leave a brother. Don't leave a brother. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. In the context of getting that good advice, here is what's powerful. Here is what's powerful. Here is what's transformational. Here is what is uh, paradigm shifting. Here, here, here is uh, what what is what is mindset blowing. You, you feel me? Here, here is the juice, baby. Here's the juice. When you reach out to somebody and say, yo, man, I'm going through the mud and they give you some great advice. You can choose, and we're going to be getting into what framework is and, and how it works, and you and then you'll be able to leverage what I'm about to say. You can choose to look at that advice as just some good advice that just got you through, or you can see it as edification. Edification is expansion if you allow it. <laughs> That's firepower, baby. Your whole world can change if you allow that good advice, that better perspective to become to you edification. What is edification? Edification, by definition, it is to uplift. It is to build. It is to construct. Now, by definition, it is the uplifting, the instruction or the improving of a person's moral or intelligence. It is, it is the uplifting, the instructing, the improving of you and I morally and intellectually. That is powerful because if I look at my homeboy's great advice, and I'm going to be sharing some personal stories in just a moment because I've been in the crapper the last couple of weeks, like I said in the beginning, and I've reached out to some folks and some people within my own house, like my wife, they've given me some dope advice and I've used it as edification. I've allowed it to build me, to construct me to expand my mind and the borders, to, to expand the borders of my framework. Guys, let me, let, me, let me stop sharing for a moment. I want to use this as an example, but I don't want to block the mic, so I got to kind of be pretty smooth with it. Okay, guys, here's how it works. You're in the crapper. You're feeling low. 
you in the dumps. You, you, you are feeling some type of way. You in your feels, right? Somebody drop me a hashtag feels. If you ever got in your feels, somebody drop me a hashtag feels. All right. You get in your feels and then you reach out to someone and they give you some great advice. And that great advice, remember that we're going somewhere with this, the power of partnership and perspective. Keep that in your mind. The power of partnership. They mean just your homeboys and homegirls. They can become your partners, partners in the ship, in the boat with you, going through it with you, right? Jumping in and offering their perspective. Okay. Okay. So when you reach out and you view it as edification, which becomes expansion, here is the practical example, right? I always love to use a prop or something that just kind of brings it home. Here's what happens. This, as you can see, all you can see today, right now, and that's how it is with your situation. All you can see is what is, is what's within the border. Sometimes we get in our funk, we get in our madness, we get into that internal dialogue. We get in, you know, like my son says, I need to get out of my mind, right? <laughs> we need to get out of our heads, right? Tony Robbins, get out of your head, get out of your head, right? Get out of your head into your heart. Okay. Many times when we're in the funk, when we're in the crapper, all we can see is what's within the borders because that's your current framework. Stay with me. I'm going to break down what framework is, right? If this is your first time joining me last week, we talked about it, but I'm going to recap on what it is in just a moment after I make this example. Okay. All you can see is what's inside the border. You have a very limited perspective, a very limited way of seeing things, a very limited way of thinking about that situation that pissed you off, that got you all in your feelings. You upset, you grimy with it, you upset, you, you, you are frustrated and you in the mud. And all you can see is what's within your frame, right? A very limited perspective. When you reach out to your homeboy, your homegirl, when you reach out to your pastor, your friend, your coworker, and they give you that great advice and they become a partner and you see it as edification, the building up, the uplifting, the instructions and the improvement of you morally and intellectually, here's what happens. You began to expand beyond the border. Now, last week I told you guys, I used this very thick border to illustrate a point. If I took, and I'm not going to do that, but if I took my certificate out of this larger frame, there is, the certificate is as large as this entire frame, this larger outer frame. There's room on the certificate all the way outside this border. I could take a pen and I could write words on these borders of the actual, actual certificate, right? I could write information on it. I could write the code uh, to a password or, you know, I could write information about myself or I could write a scripture that God, you know, really blessed me with. Whatever. Just let your mind go wild. I could write all types of things on the border. Once I put the picture or the certificate inside the frame, I cover up the words and the information that I wrote on the border. That's how it is with us. There is information. There is a better way of thinking about this. There's a better way of um, processing your problem. The information is available. The better way of thinking about it, it's available. It's there. It exists. But guess where it exists? It exists in the framework of your buddy, of your homeboy, of your homegirl, of your pastor, of your spouse, right? The person that you reached out to. It's within. It's almost like thinking about it like this. What's not within your framework or your border, right? What you can't see, this here is within theirs. Whoo, that's fire, baby. What's not within yours, what's out here for you is in here for them. And when you reach out, what's in here for them expands what's in here for you. And now this border of yours begins to expand. Oh my God. Oh, I'm about to jump about this seat. That's fire, baby. That's a whole nother way of looking at it. See, you could just say, oh, it's just some good advice. That's cool. Thank you for helping me get through. Or you can allow that great advice to become edification. And you can allow that great advice to become an expansion of your framework and your borders. And once you do, now the way you see the world, God, others, yourself, becomes greater. It becomes greater, guys. That's why I entitled this week's episode, 
the power, it is powerful. Power by definition is the ability to move things. There are things in your life, there are things in my life that have not moved in a long time or have moved ever. And you want some things to move in your life, don't you? There are some things in your life that you want to move. There are some mountains in your life that you want moved. There are some issues and problems in your life that you want moved, and they just don't seem to ever go anywhere. They don't, they don't seem to budge. You can push and push against them, and, and, and you can turn around, and you can back into them, and you can take a sludge hammer to them, and they just continue to remain. It's because your framework, your frame of reference about that thing, and most importantly, about yourself, has not expanded. It hasn't increased. And so those things, those problems, they're just uh, 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 resisting your reference. You ain't got no reference that's larger than them. In, in other words, you, you, they're looking at you saying, listen, man, your reference ain't bigger than me, so I ain't going nowhere. But when your framework, when your frame of reference expands and gets bigger, now those issues, those problems in your life, they don't change. You change. Side note. Here it comes. Side note. This morning, I released a video about prayer, EMP, early morning prayer. Guys, I'm trying to tell you, prayer is the most critical, most important, because when you pray, you get to tap into, you get to partner with the creator. Oh my God, who in the world does it? We be chomping at CEOs and, and presidents and vice presidents, and we be chopping at the next man up. Oh, can I get their attention? Can I, you know, we pay hundreds of dollars for coaching sessions. We, we pay hundreds of dollars to just uh, be in somebody's present for a few hours. God has, has, God has an open door policy and says, I am the creator of all things. I have all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding. I have the biggest framework imaginable. And I'm here for you uh, like every day. I'm like sitting here waiting for you every day. In fact, the moment that your butt wake up, I am standing ready to embrace you and drop some dopeness on you and help your frame expand. Mm, side note, I'm just, I'm just side note, guys, EMP, early morning prayer, get to God before the world gets to you. That is a side note. I'm just saying my life has completely changed because I pray. Shout out, man. Shout out to God, dude. Shout out, shout out and salute to God. You feel me? Shout out and salute to Jesus. Shout out and salute to the Holy Spirit right? I ain't challenging your religion. If you don't rock with that, that's cool. I'm not challenging your religion. All I can do is tell my truth and my life changed the moment that I began to pray. My framework ain't never been the same since the moment I began to pray. So let's jump into this thing, man. Let's rock. Uh, let's roll. Uh, let's get into, let's well, see, I, I ain't got no word to, to rhyme. I'm just, I'm just about to go to my slides. That's all. All right, check this out, guys. Here we go. Let me find my slides. Uh, slide. Uh, Slip and slide. Ooh, I'm telling my age. All right. Uh, here we go, guys. <laughs> here we go, guys. Let me see if I can go back here so I can read. Let me see. Share. I guess I got to share. I guess that'd be a good idea, right? I guess I got to share. Uh, let's see. Yeah. If you're rocking with a brother, if you're rocking with a brother, drop me a rocking with you. Drop me a hashtag rocking with you. Boom. There we go. All right, guys. Let's do our recap. Let's do our recap. What is framework? Why am I so excited? Why uh, all this juice that I'm giving y'all, all this energy that I'm giving y'all, what is this whole thing about? What, what is, what is framework? Okay, guys, framework right here. It is a particular set of rules, ideas, or beliefs, which you and I use. We all do it. We all do it. Ain't, ain't nobody excluded. We use in order to deal with our problems. Remember earlier I was talking about those problems? Remember, I was talking about those problems, right? Problems that 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 persist in your life. They ain't going nowhere uh, with problems or to decide what to do. Now, guys, here's what's up. I ain't going to break this all the way down because I already broke it down last week. But I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a home in on one particular thing and just chop it up. All right. Number one, we talking particular when you're talking about generic in general, we are talking about particular sets of rules. And ideas. That means that they are particular to you. That means your rules, your ideas, your beliefs are not mine. Okay. That means that they don't match. 
that means my world can be different than your world, right? One earth, infinite worlds, right? My world is in my mind. Your world is in your mind. Okay. And your world is made up of these things, rules, ideas, and beliefs. They're particular, right? They're yours. That's why my life can be different than yours and your life can be different than mine. Yet we can be in the same situation but I exist differently and you exist differently. Okay. Now we are using these things, this framework we're using every day, subconsciously, unconsciously. We don't even know it. That's why I love bringing awareness to these things. Right. Okay. So guys, we, we are dealing with our problems based on our framework. And that's why earlier I was telling you that if your framework, if your frame of reference is not bigger than your problem, your problem ain't going nowhere. It's not that problems really go anywhere. It's that we become greater than them. Oh, that a preach. Oh, that a preach. Shout out to my preachers. Dude, it's not that problems actually go anywhere. It's that we become greater than them. We overwhelm our problems. And, and, and for some of us currently, our problems, they're overwhelming. They're overwhelming us. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, guys. So that's what framework is. Now, I want you... Let me see if I can get back over here to my slides. This is this is the other point that I don't think I broke this down last week very, very much. Frame of reference. Right. If you can still see me, I know half the screen is the is the uh, is the is the uh, PowerPoint. But if you can still see me over here in the little small square, I got my framework up again, guys. Right. That's your frame of reference. All of us pull from a frame of reference. Now, this is where um, I want to be really real. OK, really real. Our frame of reference, just like um, let's see, think of it like a like a filing cabinet behind me. Behind me, you, you guys can't see it, but it's like a I have like a cabinet behind me, just a files right for the business and just for my you know family's paperwork. Right. And you know how you got those vanilla envelopes, vanilla, manila envelopes, one of them, right? Anyway, you got them envelopes with a gang of papers in them and you have them filed, right, by name. And you, over time, right, over, over the years, you keep on putting more and more files into that file cabinet. Now, if I want something that's not filed away, can I go and pull it? Nope, I can't pull it. Why? Because it, 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 it's not there. In the business world, they say, hey, document everything, because if it's not documented, it doesn't exist, right? If it's not documented, it doesn't exist. Well, the same works in, in our, our lives. If it's not documented, it doesn't exist. If it's not in your reference, then to you, to you, it may exist for me because it's in my reference, but it might not exist for you because it's not in your reference. You feel me? So there is, drop me a hashtag, feel me, if you feel me. Guys, if if it's not in your frame, if, if if it's not in your reference, you can't pull from it. OK, if you can't, if it's not in your reference, you can't pull from it. So what's been happening is a lot of us in our formative years. We had things done to us, said to us, we were made to feel some type of way we were hurt. We were abused. We were misused. Right. We were we were broken. In our formative years, when we were young, trying to figure out life, trying to figure out who we are, trying to uh, craft an identity, we were hurt, man. Somebody hurt us. Someone did something to us. There was a tragedy. There was a calamity. There was something that happened. And, and it ain't all bad, right? But I think we can connect on our crap, right? Crap connects us. You, you may not be able to feel me if I come on this show and just talk all about my success, right? All of my accomplishments. Ooh, look at what I did. Some people can't really vibe with that. Like, what are you talking about, right? I haven't accomplished much in my life, but we can all connect on the crap, right? So let's just keep it in the context of the crap, of the bad stuff, right? So our formative years, crap happens, and now that gets filed away in our mental Rolodex, our mental filing cabinet. And then as we go through life, I'm just all off the definition. You, you guys can definitely read that, but I want to come from the heart, right? Because I know this information. I'm just flowing from the heart, okay? So you guys can take screenshots, take notes from that definition. But as the crap happens, we're filing things away. And then as we grow older and we get opportunities to do things, to advance in the world or to have job opportunities or career choices or, you know, just the day-to-day -day choices and decisions that we, that we make out of our framework. 
sometimes, many times, they are very limited. The perspective that we have of ourselves, our ability to grow and to expand, our ability to take on challenges, to overcome problems, uh, to really seize the moment in life, a lot of it gets limited, right? When we, when we should be liberated, many of us are limited because of our frame of reference, right? For example, uh, you could have, uh, I don't know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody can come into your life, an amazing person could come into your life. And they really want to get with you. Like they really want to kick it with you. They really want to get down with you. They really feeling you. But your frame of reference, right? Your filing cabinet over the years, you've been uh, discouraged by people. You've been shunned. You've been, uh, you know, secluded. You know, you have not been included. Uh, people have, you know, uh, just disappointed you, let you down. Uh, people have alienated you, right? People have judged you. Maybe like me, you were bullied and called out your name and made to feel like you didn't have any value or worth, right? You guys heard my stories when I stuttered, being fat and overweight. You know, the kids picked on me, made me feel like I, you know, I was always either the last one picked or just not picked at all. And that crap gets in, man. And if it doesn't get resolved, if it doesn't get dealt with, later on in life, you're in this relationship with this dope person and, and they really feeling you you will find a way to fail. You will find a way to sabotage it. You will find a way to derail that dope relationship. Not because anything they've done or said, it's because you are still living out of that crappy framework. That crappy framework shows up and says, you ain't worth no dope relationship. It's only a matter of time before they hurt you. It's only a matter of time before they disappoint you. It's only a matter of time before they come up with some reason to let you go. They ain't done nothing. They ain't said nothing. They loving you. They feeling you. They ready to propose to you for all you know. But you come up with a way to back off. You come up, you play a narrative in your mind. You, you find a way to shrink back to the frame of reference. Guys, I once heard it said, and, and I may be butchering it, right? But you'll get the spirit of it, that we cannot live above our perspective of ourselves. Uh, we, we, you know, we cannot operate consistently above or, or in a greater capacity from that which, uh, you know, we see ourselves, how we see ourselves, right? We're going to find a way to shrink back. We're going to find a way to come back to our reality, to our frame of reference, guys. I'm giving game this morning. I'm giving game. This is like a, this is like a $10,000 lecture right here. I'm giving game, guys. I'm, 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 I'm giving game, right? Right. Some people go to college for this. Some people go to school for this. Some people, you know, are spending hundreds of dollars sitting on the couch, <laughs> right, getting right to, to be told this. I'm giving game right now, guys. Right. Because I'm living it. I'm understanding it. I'm studying it. Right. And it's making sense to me. And perhaps it'll make sense to you. But let me just read this definition and then we can move on, guys. Set of criteria and state of values in relation to which measurements or judgments can be made. It is a source of information in order to decide or settle on something. That's your frame of reference. I highlighted three important words. From your frame of reference, you make judgments. Guess who? Like, or, 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 or guess the person that you're judging. <laughs> Most often, it's you. You're judging you. A source? Right. You're, you're, you're pulling from your frame of reference. It becomes your source. It's not that it's true. It's not that it's facts, but you're pulling from the past. Many of us are pulling from the past. In our present, we're, we are jacking up our present because we keep pulling from the past. The present is good, but we just keep messing it up because we keep pulling from the past. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know this is going really, really well, but let me go pull some information from my, let me go to my source and pull some information out of my filing cabinet because uh, that's what's real. This is just some weird fantasy. It's going great, but you keep going back. Somebody drop me a hashtag. I feel you. If you keep going back, it's that cycle, right? And then lastly, you are deciding. You're making decisions, man. You are out here making decisions based on the past, based on your framework, based on your frame of reference. It ain't got nothing to do with actually what's, what's in your life, what's actually showing up. You keep making it about the past. You keep making it about the reference that you keep pulling from. And you keep jacking up the present and you keep sabotaging your future because you keep going back into the past and pulling up that framework, pulling up that reference, guys. And that's why I'm so passionate. 
That's why I'm so passionate about creating information around this topic of framework and around this topic um, of just the way that the mind and the way uh, that our that just our inner our inner workings work. Right. Our inner because in, there, there's always something inside working. Right. And we can learn to make it work for us versus uh, continuing allow it to work against us. Does that make sense? Somebody drop me a hashtag that that right there. Oh, my goodness. That makes sense. Somebody drop me a hashtag that makes sense. OK, guys. OK. All right. Uh, let me let me let me let me get back here real quick. Uh, to my slides. All right, guys, I want to share with you and then I'm going to take a break here and say what's up to these people that are joining. I want to share with you guys five words that changed my world. Five words. Let me put that big. Boom. Five words that changed my world. That's it right there. You see it on the bottom. Travel, you are a teacher. You are a teacher. Guys, um, I don't know if you guys have ever read my book or if you guys have ever heard or seen one of my videos where I talk about Pastor Eric Brown. 2001, I moved to Southern California with my wife. Uh, at that time, we had one son. We got four amazing, phenomenal children today. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but in 2001, my wife... My one son, Travell, we moved from Toledo, Ohio to Southern California. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing for a moment, just bring it back. We moved out here to Southern California, man, and um, we are new to the faith, right? Just got into the faith, just started loving on Jesus, allowing him to love on us. Uh, actually, he, he, he had always been loving on us, but that's another story. So um, we get out here. And we become a part of this phenomenal church that we're still a part of called Pasadena Church. It was once known as Neighborhood Church of God, right? Uh, but we renamed it, my pastor renamed it. Shout out and salute to my pastor, Pastor Kerwin L. Manning, Kerwin Lamone Manning. That is my first cousin, my blood, my, my, my pastor, my mentor, my exemplar. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's in it's in the dictionary. Exemplar, exemplar. Um, but but he is someone who I model my life. He he is an example of a man, of a godly man, of a godly husband, a father, and so so much more. Uh, but when he got the chance to come out here and become the senior pastor of Neighborhood Church of God, now Pasadena Church, um, we came along. I've shared that story before, but we got out here, man, and it wasn't long. It wasn't long before I was given the opportunity. Now, at that time, I was not Pastor Travell C.W. Lynch. I wasn't an ordained minister, I, you know, all those accolades and, and, and titles and whatnot. I didn't have all that. I was just Travell, right, uh, trying to find his way, uh, new to the faith. And so we got out here, and I was given an opportunity to share a 15-minute message with a group of men down in the fellowship hall, uh, 15 minute message on the life of Jesus. And this is my first time preaching. This was my first time teaching. Right. And so, uh, I share out of Mark 135, shout out to Mark 135, changed my life. Second favorite passage in all the Bible it talks about when Jesus gets up Early in the morning, see that's that EMP, baby. Jesus gets up early in the morning, leaves the house, goes to a solitary place where he prays. Simon and the boys comes looking for him. They exclaim, Anyway, I don't want to go down the whole path, but it's dope. It's dope. It's all about prayer. It's all about putting prayer as a, uh, at least what I got from it was putting prayer as a priority, getting to God before the world gets to you and all of that, right? So that's where that philosophy came from. So, anyway, I share, I share on this passage, uh, first time preaching, first time teaching. And when I'm done, Pastor Eric Brown, right? He's since gone on with the Lord. I even dedicated my latest book, What is Enough, to him. And so um, he comes up to me. I'm at, the, I'm at the front stage. He comes up to me, he puts a hand on my shoulder, and he says, Travel, you are a teacher. And he smiles at me. That's it. Five words that changed my world. That's all he said. Remember, we one earth. 
infinite worlds, right? We all live in our own world. Well, those five words changed my world. He said I was a teacher. Now, at that time, I had not I had not taken a spiritual gifts assessment. Um, I didn't even know what spiritual gifts were. Right. Um, I didn't know anything about, you know, the fivefold ministry gifts and all this other stuff. All I know is that man just told me I was a teacher and, and I hadn't had that perspective of myself. Right. And why am I telling this story? Today's message, today's broadcast, the power of partnership and perspective. When Eric partner gave me the perspective, you are a teacher because I hadn't ever seen myself that way. My framework, boom, expanded. Oh my goodness. See how that works? See, I'm not just woofing, dude. I ain't just reading some books behind me or listening to some audio book or watching some YouTube video and just talking crap. Everything I share with you, I am freaking living. I am living it or have lived it. And I'm here to tell about it. True story, right? There, there should be some little true story symbol over my head or something like that, right? True Hollywood stories, true uh, South, uh, South California, Southern California stories, right? Guys, whole world change. That 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 sent me. Now that's 2001. Today is 2021. 20 years, baby. How I, I put my zeros up on my, or or should I put two over here? Because uh, it's the reverse for you. 20 years, baby. I've been on this journey. He set my world on fire, man. All he said was, Travel, you are a teacher. He didn't sit down with me and give me no whole lecture. He didn't sit down with me and give me no whole step-by-step -step guide. He didn't sit down with me and say, okay, I'm going to make you this great teacher of the word. I'm going to show you how to do X, Y, and Z. All he said, man, was five words. And it, it changed my world. That's why I believe, and that's why I can teach and I can articulate this message so well, is because I believe it from the depths of my soul. Partnership, people in your life that will speak a word into your life that is edifying. Remember, guys, remember in the beginning, I was setting you up. I was just setting you up. If you allow the words to become edification, then it can become experience expansion of your morals and your intelligence. And that's what it did for me. That's exactly what it did for me. And it can work the same way for you. I only share my story to give you an example so that now you can believe it and then apply it into your life. That's what's up. That's why I shared that guys. Okay. So let me say what up to some of these good people, man. What's going on? Some good people are jumping in to the universe this morning. Good morning, successful Saturday. What's going on? I want to say your name, uh, Farrar, 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 if that is the correct name pronunciation and you are still rocking with me this morning, brother, these broadcasts, uh, if this is your first time joining me, I normally go about 45 minutes to an hour and just rock with you and flow with you. Uh, but Farrar, thank you so much for rocking with me and joining me this morning in the broadcast. Successful Saturday to you as well, my brother. Farrar says, hey, man, my man David is in the building. Good morning to you too, my brother. David says, fire emojis. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. David says, congratulations. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. It's, it's uh, man, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed to, to, to be the shepherd, to be, a, you know, to, to be a shepherd of God's people. It is such an honor. It's, it's such an honor. Um, and so humbling so humbling that God would choose you to do such a work, man. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Angeline, the big apple is in the building. Hey brother. She says live from New York. Yes. Yes. That is my sister from another mister in the building. P I what's going on. My brother What's going on with your man. Hashtag live. Thank you for rocking with me, man. Thank you for joining and sending them good vibes and this dope energy, man. I love you, brother. Angeline says, great topic. Thank you so much. Lucky. Uh oh, lock. I mean, hold on. Lock. Like Lear, like Lear, like Lear. Hey, if you are still rocking with me, like Lear, let me know if that's the proper way to say it. Cause I don't, you know, one thing about people that, that uh, may be joining for the first time, I haven't said your name uh, very much. And so I don't want to mispronounce your name. So if I'm not saying that correctly, give me one of those, you know, you know how they take a name 
and then they break it down and say, this is how you say it, right? So Locklear, if that is not how you say it, pre please um, correct me and let me know. So thank you so much for rocking with me. Good morning to you as well. Natalie is in the building. What's going on, Sister Lucas? Live and good morning from GA. What's going on? What's going on? What's happening? And fire emojis from Natalie. She's watching by YouTube. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you guys so much for letting me know that you are in the building. All right, guys, let me get back to my slides here. I want to share the rest of my content this morning. All right, all right, all right. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? All right, got that one. Here we go. Here we go. All right, guys. I'm not going to go through this entire thing, okay? Um, but I, I, I wanted you, you know, you can screenshot it. <laughs> you know, you can take out your phone, screenshot it, you know, just so that you know that again, I, I think in, you know, that, um, integrity, integrity matters in content, integrity matters in broadcasting and podcasting, right? Integrity matters. And if you haven't downloaded and if you haven't subscribed to my podcast, cause I do a live weekly, uh, broadcast. If this is your first time wa uh, watching me and you enjoy this content, I would love to have you back. I would love to have you rock with me every Saturday at seven here live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but if you are into podcasting and you want to listen to some dope podcasts, um, I release a new podcast episode every Saturday as well. Following this broadcast, it's on the same topic, but it comes with a different spin. It's a different experience, a different flow. Um, so it just reinforces uh, and I share different content, different things around the same topic. So if you want to go even deeper, then subscribe to the podcast. The information is on the bottom of the screen, scrolling back and forth. But I share this before and after, right? Because I want to continue to emphasize that I come from a place of integrity. Okay. New view, new you, new view, a new you guys on on your right hand side, because it's on my left hand side, so it must be on your right hand side. That is my before picture. The stutterer, overweight, no dad, mom in the home, bullied, abused, sexually molested, addicted to pornography. That's a big one. I'm 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 gonna have to create some content around that because that one is still on, under the radar. People ain't talking about porn like they used to. Oh no, 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 no. That that's kind of taboo now. Like, like people like it, it's so acceptable now. It's so it's so much in our music and videos and everything. People don't want to talk about porn, but there are still some people that are suffering from addiction to pornography. Marriages are on the rocks, lives are being torn apart. Um, and just the internal struggle and wrestling because you can't get away from that pornography. So I'm gonna be, be creating some content around that as well. But I was addicted to pornography, man, drugs, dropped out of college. You guys can see the whole list there. That was my before pick, man. That was before Christ, right? You know how they do A, D, B, C, right? You know, after, before. This is my before picture, man. This was my mental Rolodex. We talked about frame of reference. Your right-hand side from stutterer to facing 15 years for grand theft, that was the reference I was pulling from before Christ. Once I got with Christ and once I got with people like Eric and these other partners, right? Then the other side, your left hand side, that's that's my new life. That's my new reality, guys. And I'm not sharing it to brag. I'm not sharing it to hindsight. I'm not I'm not sharing it to uh, show you how great I am. Forget all that. Forget all that. I'm about possibilities. I am about possibilities. And a part of me communicating what's possible for you is showing you an example of what's been possible for me and what was made possible for me. Because my framework changed, my borders expanded. So now I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a pastor about to celebrate 11 years in the ministry here, right? Husband, 20 years, guys. That's dope to be married 20 years, to get married at the age of 23 and to still be married, to not let all the crap of the world tear you guys apart. That's God's mercy and grace, man. That's, 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 that's huge. That ain't no game. 20 years in the game. That's real, man right? Father of four. By God's grace, I've been able to raise four children, man. Two adults, two in high school. That's dope. I brag on what God has done in my life because I know that my framework would have never been able to get me these things. I brag on God. I big up God. I give all glory and praise to God. You feel me? I'm a ride with him. I'm a ride with him because he rides with me. Look at what he's done in my life, guys. 
and look at what he can do in your life if you allow him to. So anyway, I always want to share this because this is the this is the evidence. Some people are looking for proof. They're looking for evidence. Here's the evidence, man. If you get a new a new view, a new perspective, if you get a new view, then you get a new you. And that's what's up. That's real. That's real talk right there. That's real talk. That's game right there. I'm giving y'all game this morning. I'm telling you, I'm giving you game. All right, guys, let's jump into this last one. Five words that changed my work. Guys, the reason I'm talking about this partnership and perspectives, I'm celebrating 11 years and I'm going to have to tag him in this or I'm going to have to reach out to him and find him somewhere and let him know. Uh, just how dope he is. Not that I've not told him before, but I'm, I'm just reminding him how dope he is again. Dwayne Cantrell, pastor, doctor. He's a freaking doctor, baby. PhD. Uh, Dr. Dwayne Cantrell. Guys, sitting in his office at Maranatha High School. I think it was around 2005. Yep. Matter of fact, I know it was 2005. We're in his office. And a lot of people have been telling me, oh, Terrell, you're going to be a pastor. You're going to have a church. You're going to you're going to do this. You're going to do that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my perspective, my framework on pastoring was not mm -mm, I can't do that. Huh, no, nah. sweating, hooping, hollering from a pulpit every Sunday and church stuff. It just it just wasn't a good picture for me. So my framework, my frame of reference was, was very small when it came to being a pastor. OK. Got with Dwayne, man. Yo, Dwayne, man. People woofing in my ear. They're telling me I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell me, you know, I'm going to do that. I do not want to be no pastor, man. I don't want nothing to do with being no pastor. Here's five words that changed my work, right? Because as Miles Monroe says, <laughs> your real work is the work assigned to you by God. Some of us go to a job. That's not your work. Or for some of us who is blessed enough, who glory to God, those of you who have... Those of you who can marry your J-O-B, your nine to five with your actual work given by God, if you can marry those two, if they can be one and the same, hey, man, you have a huge advantage. OK, huge advantage. Uh, but most likely your nine to five is what you do to earn money. Your work, your actual work is the assignment of God on your life. The work that, that you've been created to do, the good works that will last, the good works that will follow you into eternity, right? Five words that changed my work, guys. Sitting, talking to Dwayne. Again, remember, you're reaching out to somebody. Power of partnership and perspective. I, ain't, I, I am not feeling this, Dwayne. I am not feeling this. I am not feeling this. Dwayne said, a pastor is a shepherd. Now, you may think that ain't really all that big of a deal. Yeah, it is. Because here's what he said afterwards. A pastor is a shepherd. How you shepherd don't got to look or be like nothing no one else has ever seen. Oh, my goodness. Borders expanded. Yeah, man. Edification, baby. Woo! That means I can say yes to God, but do me. Whew, that is liberation for somebody out there. You can say yes to God's will for your life and still do you. Somebody out there, you may have the calling of God in your life. You may feel like he's calling you to do something. Start a ministry. Uh, work on this. Work on that. Start doing this. Launch this. Launch that. You may be no, you may feel and know God is saying, do this in your life, but you are terrified, man. You are scared to death because you think you got to give up being who you are. And you don't. Because Dwayne said a pastor ain't nothing but a shepherd, man. That means you have a flock. You have people that listen to you, that follow you, and you pour into them. You feed them. Remember Jesus? Peter, you love me? Yeah, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter. Do you love me? Yeah, Jesus. I love you, dude. D come on, man. Don't you get it? Okay. Feed my sheep. That's it. My job is to feed, man. So when I go live on Saturdays, I'm feeding. When I record my podcast, I'm feeding. As I'm putting together in the background these master classes, I'm going to be feeding. In the background, while I'm creating my online courses that I'm going to be launching really soon here and providing more and more information about the things that I've learned and the things that I'm living, I'm feeding. It's my job. 
through through the gift of teaching, I feed. That's it. And now for you, whatever God is calling you to do, you still get to do you because I'm feeding the way I feed. I don't have a pulpit on Sunday morning. I don't have a church building. I don't have a, a congregation that comes and sits in physical chairs. I don't have that. But I have whoever is tuning in live or on the replay. I have whoever is going to buy my course. I have whoever is going to read my book. I have my own way of shepherding. And you can do you inside the calling of God. Five words that changed my work. I never would have accepted the work of God, or at least I don't think I would have, had Dwayne partner not giving me a pastor as a shepherd perspective. That's why today I'm talking about partnership, the power of partnership and perspective, because that's what that's what I've lived. And it's been true for me. And I know that it can be true for you as well. All right, guys, last slide, last slide. As I prepare to close, let me see what you see. Let me, let me come back over here. Let me see what you see. Here is my call to action. If you wanted a call to action, right? Because when they teach you how to speak, they teach you how to broadcast and present. They say, oh, you got to have a, a call to action. You got to have a CTA, baby. You got to have a call to action. Okay, guys, here it is. Here is my call to action. Surround yourself with those with larger borders. That's it. That's it. Surround yourself with those with larger borders. Does that mean that you have to go out and get a best friend physically? It does not. Your surrounding of yourself with those who have a larger border, aka larger framework, aka larger perspective, aka larger frame of reference, and a capacity to share with you from out of their frame of reference. Your ability to get those types of people around you is as easy as you identifying what it is that you desire in your life, whether it's relationships, whether it's professional, whether it's ministry-based, whether it's personal development, uh, you name it, man. You name it, you frame it. You put it in your context, whatever it is for you. Sitting down, deciding what areas of life you would like to see improved, right? And you beginning to look for, whether it's your immediate physical surroundings, people who are mentors, leaders, pastors, uh, coaches, who are in your immediate that you can reach out to and say, hey, mentor me. Hey, let's you know grab a cup of coffee. Hey, let me pick your brain. If you don't have that, if you don't have the physical, let me stop sharing here. Okay. Let me see what you see. Keep that in mind. Let me see what you see, right? Okay. Let me, let me come back. If you don't have the ability to find someone in the physical, okay, here's what you do. You find someone in the virtual. I'm going to raise my hand. I'll volunteer to be your virtual mentor. That's right. If you need somebody in your ear, if you need somebody to uh, share with you out of their framework, here I is. Here I is. I go live every Saturday, 7 o'clock, right here. I'm going to show up for you. Every Saturday, I'm going to drop a new podcast episode. Every Saturday, right? And then throughout the week, you know, as I'm led, I'll pop a new video out. I'll pop some new content out. I've got books. Right, you guys can go to www.imthepossiblepodcast.com, find out more information. You can go to my website, I'm the possible.com, right there. I got a free workbook that you can download where I get more information. And I'm beginning to come out with more and more information and content and tools and strategies and things that, that you can utilize. I'll be your mentor, I'll be your virtual mentor. My YouTube channel is full of videos, hundreds of videos right? Hundreds of them. You can just go through my YouTube video catalog and just look at them videos. You, you can start there. Here's another way. One thing that I love is audiobooks. Find somebody, right, who is speaking your language, who, who you can identify with, people who, ex, who um, are experts in the field in which you're trying to improve. 
and get you an audio book. 12 bucks, 13 bucks, cost you a little bit of nothing. Download that sucker and every morning wake up and listen to it. Another one, the the Bible. Now I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna speak on Christian stuff that might not be your religion, I don't know, but from a Christian perspective, you got prayer, you got God, you got Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You can wake up and read scripture every day and let that begin to mentor you. Let that begin to be someone someone and something that is surrounding you, right? As a partner. Another thing is books. You see my bookshelf behind me? I got three rows on both sides of my shelving full of books. I read those people I've never met before. I've never met these people before, but I read their books. John Maxwell, Miles Monroe, just to name a few. John Mason, my favorite, my favorite uh, 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 author in all the world, John Mason. Guys, you can read books. You can read books. You can listen to books. We got YouTube. They say on average, there's like every few seconds, there's a new YouTube video being uploaded. That is a university, a virtual university right there. Just cut on YouTube and stop looking at the crap and the garbage that's draining your energy, that's keeping you in the limited, excuse me, contracted framework and start doing new searches like what is framework? How do I change my mind? Right. <laughs> how, how, how do I get out of the funk uh, by using my mind? Like start putting in some new keywords. <laughs> you feel me? Right. But what I'm saying is I'm making it very simple and practical because some people you may not have someone physically in your life that you can just reach out to and say, hey, man, let's go get some coffee. Hey, man, let's go for a walk. Hey, man, let's meet up every week. Right. But you you do have this thing called the Internet that can provide you in the meantime some really great mentors virtually YouTube videos, audio books, physical books online courses, right? These are just a few, right? And there are tons of men and women on YouTube and that are on Facebook going live every week that will show up for you and provide you some information that you can begin to take in on purpose, intentionally, and you can allow them, once you resonate, you find a few people that you can really resonate with and say, okay, you're going to be my virtual mentor. You're going to be my partner. I'm going to allow you in to my ship. You're the partner in my ship. I'm going to allow you to come in. And when I'm feeling down and I'm feeling low, I'm going to go to you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to, I'm going to vibe and rock out to you and allow you to give me a different perspective. I'm going to allow you to give me a new way of thinking and a new way of, of feeling about this thing. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to edify me and to build me up. Let me see what you see. I'm going to end with this, guys. Let me see what you see. They can see something. They have a framework. They can see something that, that you can't see. And sometimes you need to borrow someone else's framework. Sometimes you need to pierce over in there and say, hey, man, what you see? Oh, <laughs> you see something that I don't see. But if you see it, then it must exist. It's just that I don't see it. But let me see it through your eyes. Let me see it through your eyes. Let me let me see it through your eyes, right? Let me see it through your eyes. Right now, guys, I'm wearing glasses because my eyes have been damaged over the years. From all my book writing to blogging to articles that I've written to working um, at a, a job for over 15 years that is 90% computer-based, right? I've been staring at this screen full of blue light and blue, whatever they call it nowadays, and my eyes... They've gotten worn down. So now I wear glasses. If I take my glasses off and you look through my eyes, uh, certain things will be blurry. Probably not the best eyes to look through. But if I gave you a, a healthy, thriving, um, strong, right, 10-year-old uh, or 13-year-old, and you look through their eyes, the world is crystal clear, right, razor sharp. So we must be careful whose eyes we're looking through. Who eyes are you looking through? Is it the friends and the family who are always down in the mud, always talking crap, always finding ways to fail, always looking to uh, bring you into their pity party? Every time you go around them, they got that negative, crappy energy. Are those the eyes that you keep looking through? Is that the framework that you keep revisiting and drawing from their reference? 
right? Or are you ready to, uh, on purpose, with intention, right? Look for people who have a greater view, greater outlook, and say, hey, come here. Be my partner. Again, I'm signing up, guys. You know how to hit me in a DM. If you're out there and you're like, yo, man, I need some of that. I need, I need some of that, right? Some of you have reached out to me before. I'm circling back. But if you're out there for the first time and you're like, yo, I need, I need some of that. I need, I need some of that uh, framework, man, that you're talking about. Hit me in the DM, man. That's what we got Messenger for. Hit me in the DM or go to my website. Hit me up there, man. Send me an email. Let's chop it up. Let's get together because I'll be your mentor, right? I'm putting some things in place where I can better serve. My capacity is growing. My capacity to serve is growing, right? You better get in while you can, right? Get in while it's hot, right? But, but, but on some real talk, guys. Which one you gonna choose today? Which which one you gonna choose? All right, guys, that is it, man. That is it. Let me put my put my frame over here before I knock something over. That is it. I am loving y'all, man. I am believing in y'all. Thank y'all so very much, Velda. What's going on, my sister? She says, "Brother, God has changed you." Oh my goodness, yes, He has. Yes, He has, Velda. Oh my goodness, it'll take me. It'll take me. Uh, it'll take me all of 2021 to tell the world what he's done for me. And I still wouldn't be done um, <laughs> if I went live with a broadcast on just what he's done for me. Uh, Velda says, taking that change and holding the hope in your heart along with uh, faith, not only in God, but in yourself. My goodness. Yes. You said it, sis. You said it. You said it. Yes, yes, yes. Your book started me on a path I'm still learning from. That is such, ah, ah, ah. Mm. yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's, 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 that's it. That's it. Yep. Word, words can't even describe. That's it. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you, Velda. Thank you. Collaboration with like-minded, uplifting people is necessary to grow you and them. So very true. You bless people by drawing from them. You bless people by pulling from them. You actually do. You're so, so right. Because a lot of people want to help and a lot of people would love to serve you. They would love to share information with you. They would love to share their expertise with you. They would love to give you some tips and tricks. They would love to reach back and pull some people forward, but not everyone is asking, right? They're going to only share with those that, that, that really want it, right? So absolutely, they are blessed just as much as you are blessed when you reach out uh, to them, guys. So I am ready to close. Let me shut down the ticker tape. Let me find my outro video to make sure I click the right button this time. Um, guys, go out and have an amazing Saturday. Guys, go out and uh, make somebody make somebody smile today. I don't know. That's just what I feel led to say. Make somebody smile, man. You you can definitely make somebody, you know, feel like more crap, right? We all in the crapper. You can definitely make somebody feel like more crap. Um, but I promise you, It'll be a win-win. A, a if you go out today and find somebody to make smile, just whew. If, if someone smiled today because of you, because of you, it, it, it's going to rock their world, but it's going to also rock your world and, 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 the, and the ripple effect, guys, the ripple effect of that. So we need more and more people that, that just want to do something as simple as helping somebody else smile today. So I pray that you would follow my instructions and that you would do that. Very, very simple thing. Take this information, get juiced up on it, feel good about it. Know that hope is on the way. That hope is present, right? But your change is on the way. Um, and, 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 and go out with that juice, man, and, and, and help somebody to smile on Saturday. Hashtag smile on Saturday. Smiling Saturdays. Saturdays to smile. I don't know. I'm just coming up with something. But smile, man. Help somebody to smile. They they need you. You you may be the go between. You you may be the lifeline that someone needs. Because if they smile, their mood will change, their state will change, and, and and maybe just that moment keeps them from calamity, or keeps them from throwing in the towel, or keeps them from suicide, or keeps them from making a bad decision. You could be that game changer for them. So go out and do that today. Love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. I am believing in you guys. Until next time, peace.